Hello, welcome to Lemon Studios, where we talk anything and everything in entertainment. I'm, of course, Lemon himself, Zeke Lemon, and this is Crash. You all probably want to see a little bit more of him. Say hi, buddy. Say hi. And this is my review for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Some Bird and Snakes. But before we get into that, let's get the house cleaning out of the way, shall we? I'm going to need you to leave a like on this video. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts of The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Some Bird and Snakes. And you know what? Go ahead and rank them down in the comment section as well. I'll give my ranking at the end of this video. And... Also, of course, to hit that subscribe button as that helps me grow into my YouTube career, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into the review. So, I'm a very casual fan when it comes to the Iron Games. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I haven't read any of the books, so if you're looking for someone who has knowledge of the books and knows every detail of it and is a huge fan of the franchise, this isn't the review for you. This is coming from someone who just enjoys watching movies and gives every movie a shot because also... When it comes to these uh, Hunger Games movies, as of right now, they're batting two out of four. Pre this one. It was a two out of four. Well, this one ranks. Again, I'll let you know at the end. Um, but to give the positives of this movie is the performances. Uh, some of the ones that really stand out to me is Viola Davis. Um, I mean, Viola Davis is just one of those performers where you're just like, oh, yeah, she's great. And then you watch her and you're like... She's more than great. Like, she did not have to go this hard for a Hunger Games movie. But she did. She did that for us. And it is such a delight. I mean, she just plays this wacky person who is such a supporter of the games and um, and just kind of oversees everything. It is She is just a very, very fun character. Peter Dinklage, I mean, again, another one that you're just like, oh yeah, he's great. And then you watch him. At the end, Towards the end of this movie, he gives this performance that is just like, man, are you going for an Oscar? <laughs> like, what? what? Who are you, dude? <laughs> Who are you? Why are you going this hard? He is absolutely phenomenal in this movie. Rachel Z uh, Zelger, who I can never pronounce her last name right, so I apologize if I butchered it again, which I most likely did. She has continued to prove why she's going to be a future superstar in this industry. I mean, she did West Side Story, and she has not looked back since. And I think this movie is going to catapult her, kind of like how Jennifer Lawrence uh, did for, uh, career did after the first Hunger Games uh, franchise. I mean, it, she is great in this movie as well. She sings a lot. That's a minor nitpick I have of it. I mean, she's she she's an amazing singer. Don't get me wrong. Like you know, I enjoyed listening to her sing. It's absolutely great. It just really felt like her character note was. All right, how can she be relatable? She can sing. <laughs> that's, that's truly what it felt like with her. And I do not recall the uh, actor for who played Young Snow, but he's absolutely great too. Um, and I'm going to be looking, keeping an eye out for more work that he's done because I think he's also a potential future superstar in this industry if he uh, so chooses to be one. He definitely has the capabilities to do it. Um, again, all the performances are just stupid. They did not need to go that hard. Another thing is the chemistry between uh, Young Snow and um, uh, Miss Gray, who's played by uh, Rachel Zog. Zog uh, I cannot pronounce her last name. Uh, the main love interest between those two, I really bought their chemistry. Um, it felt sudden at first. I don't know if that makes a, any, if that's clear, because again, I bought their chemistry once they were together. However, them building up to be together felt very rushed. I felt like there were some other steps that we need to get to for on both sides to see why they would fall for each other because like they were building up to this moment and it felt forced. But once they were together, I bought it. I was like, yeah, no, they're a couple. They're, they're, they're great. Um, I bought, I bought their chemistry more than, uh, Katniss and Peta's uh, chemistry and the, uh, actual, Hunger Games uh, trilogy or qual trilogy, I should say. Really bought that. So performances are amazing. Chemistry is superb. And it was also great to see a Hunger Games again. Not that it's great to see uh, see people dying, but y'all know what I mean. The action, you know, that, you know, the, the politics behind it, building those alliances and seeing the, an actual games again was really cool to see because we didn't get one after two. I, I think so. I think I think we got a games in two, and then after that we kind of we kind of steered away from that. Um, it's been a while since I watched the original Qual trilogy. 
Um, and it was really cool. It, again, it was just really cool to see that and some of the ways that it was shot was very, very nice. And also how the handling of President Snow is another positive to me because I was worried going in and now I do know now that this was based off of an original source material. This is an actual book. It, they didn't just make this up for a cash grab, which is what I originally thought because usually with these types of things, it's just a cash grab. But no, there was original source material, so I had more faith in it. Um, is that they never butchered who Snow is. Because, you know, at first I was thinking, okay, they're probably going to do this. Oh, he just misunderstood. And then, you know, a couple, he just had a bad day or something happens. Which in the trailer really makes it seem like this one thing is going to happen. And it doesn't. It doesn't. But you do see how he gets to who he is. And maybe it was always inside of him. I... I gotta tell you, some of the things that Young Snow does, I'm like, well, what's a cheer for this guy? <laughs> because he is ruthless in some instances that I won't get into because, you know, it's, it's a minor spo uh, spoiler territory. Um, so I won't, I won't, I will not. But the handling of the President Snow character or Young Snow character to me was done gracefully because, again, they did not handicap who he becomes in the future because then you just feel like there's a big gap like no after this movie i'm like yeah no i can see why he becomes who he is and uh the uh by the time we meet katniss and all that now that's really all the positives i have now let's get into the negative because no movie is perfect right i only really have one big critique of this movie but i'll get into some of the nitpicks I already addressed it earlier with uh, uh, Rachel's character, uh, Miss Gray. Um, I believe, I, be I think her first name's Skylar. I think her name is Skylar Gray. The character's name is that it just sings way too much and just needed more character attributes besides I'm a great singer. Um, and that is that the movie is just too long. <laughs> it overstays its welcome. And it's not even by like, you reach the third act and you're like okay this i'm feeling the runtime of it now you're feeling it in act two basically let me see it's a tale of two halves the first half is really really good and it's very tight some things are rushed like i said with the relationship building between uh gray and snow um and some other things here and there but for the most part very smooth and i'm like okay this movie, this movie's pretty good. Then we reach the second half. And then you start to feel it like, okay, some scenes are just going way too long. And it's not even like two or three minutes long. It's probably 10 or 20 seconds long, but still too long nonetheless. This movie is about, I want to say two hours and 40 minutes, I believe. Could have easily been 2.30. Two hours and 30, maybe two hours and 20. Um, Could have... Sh could have shaved a few seconds here and there to really bring it down. Again, it's not just the third act. It's not just the second act. And it's not just the first act, which, again, the first act to me is the best part of this movie. Is that it's the whole entire thing. Because, like, retroactively, I'm like, yeah, we could have probably trimmed something here. We could have probably trimmed something there. Well, we could have got that two hour and 30 minute mark. It just overstays its welcome. Especially, again, it's not just the third act. But in the... but in the finale you're starting to feel it more because you're just like all right we get it you already made your point let's keep let's get this going let's let's start to wrap this thing up and that's truly the only criticism i have and with that being said i think the hunger games a ballad the ballad of songbird and snakes is one of the positive ones again before this it was batting two out of four and which is a 0.500 yeah that's 0.500 and I was not looking forward to seeing this movie to be completely honest with you because again it is, it is a very hit or miss franchise for me because again it's only batting 500 two out of four and it was a prequel it's about a villain it just had everything going against it for me and I ended up having a really great time due to the performances and all the other things that I stated before and with that my ranking now is to me, Mockingjay Part 1 is fifth. I honestly think that's a bad movie. <laughs> um, they did not need to split Mockingjay Part 1 and Part 2. 
Uh, it could have been just one solid movie. They could have turned a lot of things in part one. I could not, I cannot stand the constant director thing with Katniss. It, it, it drove me nuts. Uh, and fourth is the first Hunger Games. I remember going to see it. My sister loves the book. She drags me to it. Well, she didn't drag me. I just love going to the movies. But I go see it. And I'm just like, I don't get the hype. <laughs> I don't get why these books are so beloved. Um, and then after that, in third place is Mockingjay Part 2. Granted, I would prefer if Part 1 and Part 2 were just one movie. But Part 2 really brings it home. I don't know if it's just a fast-paced action and they got all that filler stuff out of the way in Part 1. But it really gets moving. And it does tie this whole entire franchise up in a nice bow. And second is probably this movie. I granted the the runtime does hurt it a little bit, but honestly, if the runtime is is per is good, it doesn't it, it it takes the first place spot. It take it overtakes Catching Fire, which is number one, which is to me is an absolutely fantastic movie. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I was going to keep talking. So yeah, I I I really do recommend Hunger Games: A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I have no idea how accurate it is to the books. There is one line in the movie that I'm just like, I feel like they shoot it in, but I did overhear someone talking in the background saying that it is in the book, and it is a Katniss line, <laughs> and it the way that it was portrayed was like ah 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 we we didn't forget yeah Katniss. And it felt forced, but I I hear that it's actually in the book, but it felt forced. It felt forced. But besides besides that, in the runtime, great movie. I have a good I have a really good time with it. I mean, the performance is enough really carry carry this movie. And also, I was on a good crowd. They were really excited to see this movie. Um, people clapped when the movie started. I don't think I've seen that since maybe No Way Home. <laughs> so yeah, go out and see. Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes. Have a good time with it. I would even pay full price for it. And uh, I think that's going to do it for me, guys. And until next time, I'll see you here at Lemon Studios.